Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the last unit, we talked about how X-bar theory overgenerates. It produces sentences and phrases that are not actually grammatical in English. But we also saw how if we made reference to the properties of individual lexical items, that is, words, we are able to talk about the restrictions on X-bar theory that would, uh, in, would ensure that it does not overgenerate. In particular, we talked about two different kinds of restrictions. We talked about subcategorizational restrictions, or categorical restrictions, and selectional restrictions, or, which are effectively semantic restrictions. In this unit, we're going to talk about thematic relations. Thematic relations are a way of encoding selectional or semantic restrictions. They represent the particular semantic relationships between an argument and a predicate. So let's look at some examples. The first example we're going to look at is the thematic relation of agent. The agent is the initiator, the causer, or the doer of an action. So for example, in the sentence Brad hit Andrew, Brad is the agent. A falling rock hit Terry. Falling rock is the agent. Luis accidentally broke the glass. Luis is the agent. Notice that intention is not critical. Now you will find in the literature on thematic relations restrictions on this, uh, theta, this thematic relation um, such that only things that are capable of volition are, uh, are viewed as agents. For our purposes this isn't necessary, so we're not going to make that distinction we're not going to require uh, capability of volition. We're uh, just going to require that it be an initiator, causer, or doer. The second thematic relation we're going to talk about is the experiencer. The experiencer is an argument that experiences or perceives an event. So for example, in our sentence here, Lorenzo is an experiencer. Kenny is frightened. And Susanna loves the cookies. Lorenzo, Kenny, and Susanna are all examples of experiencers. Notice that the position doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's in subject or object position. This is about the semantic relation. One important thing to know is that not all things that experience um, L, uh, uh, verbs or actions are experiencers. Um, often people uh, take cases like a falling rock hit Terry and say, Terry experienced being hit. Terry must be an experiencer. This is the most common mistake that people make with thematic relations, is they overextend the use of experiencer to uh, arguments like Terry. Um, typically speaking, experiencers only happen with verbs of emotion, like love, hate, perception, as in see, hear, look. Or cognition, things like um, frighten, uh, know, um, understand. Those are all examples of verbs of emotion, perception, and cognition. Sometimes they're called psych verbs because they involve a psychological experience. So uh, an experiencer is only an argument of uh, one of these psych verbs, these verbs of emotion, uh, perception, or cognition. Themes are essentially the entities that undergo actions, are moved, experienced, or perceived. So in our sentence, Susanna loves cookies, cookie, cookies is the theme. Uh, a falling rock hit Terry, Terry uh, is, 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 is essentially experiencing or um, undergoing the action of being hit. And um, the syntactician bought a phonology textbook. The phonology textbook is the thing that is bought. So those are all themes. You'll also find a more subtle distinction um, 
among the literature on thematic relations using the terms patient and percept. For the moment, we're going to lump uh, patients, percepts, and themes all into one category, just for simplicity, because we don't need the distinction in what we're going to do. But if you take a course in semantics, you may well learn that these are different things. A goal is an entity towards which uh, motion takes place. Um, and goals, by the way, may involve some kind of abstract motion as well as a real motion. A falling rock hit Terry. Terry is the theme, but Terry is also the goal of where the rock hits. Um, the syntactician bought a phonology textbook. The syntactician is the one, uh, is, is where the phonology textbook ends up. One of the most common means of marking goals is, you, is with the preposition to. So Millie went to Chicago. If you see that to preposition, you've almost certainly got a goal. Another one was Travis was given a semantics article. Travis is the end point of the giving action. So uh, Travis is in fact uh, a goal as well. Um, a special kind of goal is sometimes called a recipient. Uh, and recipients usually involve an exchange of possession, but they're essentially goals with that exchange of possession. So Julie gave Jessica the book, Jessica is the recipient of the book. Roy received a scolding from Sherilyn. Roy is the recipient of the scolding. Um, another, another common thematic relation is source. It's effectively the opposite of the goal. It's the entity from which mo motion occurs. And the most classic cases of sources are marked with the preposition from. So Stacy came directly from sociolinguistics class. Sociolinguistics class is a source. But it also shows up in other kinds of um, DPs or NPs. So for example, Bob gave Steve the syntax assignment. Bob is a source in that case because Bob is where the syntax assignment came from. Uh, another thematic relation is the location. It's the place where actions occur um, so, for example, Jesus is in Tucson's finest apartment, or we're all at school in Tucson's finest apartment, and at school are examples of locations. In, at, on are often uh, examples of locations. Um, the instrument is the entity with which an action occurs. Often in English, instruments are marked with the preposition with, as in Patrick hacked the computer apart, with an axe. Um, but they don't need to. So for example, this key will open the door to the Douglas building. The key is the instrument with which the opening occurs. And we have one more to talk about, which is the beneficiary. The beneficiary is the entity for whom the action occurs. Often in English, these are marked with for, but not necessarily. So he bought these flowers for Jason. Jason is the beneficiary of the buying. She cooked Matt dinner. I've underlined the wrong thing here. It's Matt. Matt is the beneficiary in this sentence. Um, you could also say he bought Jason flowers. Jason would still be a beneficiary in that case, even where the for preposition is not present. So this is a short survey of some thematic relations. So you have the vocabulary to talk about these kinds of relationships. In the next unit, we're going to talk about theta roles, which are something distinct from thematic relations, but use thematic relations as a tool. And it's those theta roles and the theta grids that we're going to use to block overgeneration uh, by the X-bar theory.